hands started shaking, my pencil kept breaking. When I sat down to write her, my voice started choking up the time I spoke up. The road round the throat's grown tighter. My name is Ron Nagel, and we are talking in my studio in San Francisco. I grew up in San Francisco, born and raised uh, in San Francisco. I never thought of it as art, but I always liked to make small objects. I first met Peter Volkus in 1958, and I applied to get into graduate school at Berkeley, and I didn't get in, and I was heartbroken. And he said, you don't want to go to school. I said, yeah, I don't, I really don't want to. I said, I just want to work with you. He said, okay. And he offered me a job in a studio, and the rest is whatever. I always liked the work. Because it didn't fit into any category, it wasn't really what people would think of as ceramics or pottery. Ceramics, usually people thought of as either something figurative or something in, the, in a vessel form. A lot of uh, do's and don'ts and rules and propriety about how you should use the material. So seeing work that Volkus was doing, there was nothing like it. It didn't look like any sculpture that was going on at the time. In the beginning, everybody hated us. If you were a traditional potter or a studio potter, this is the Bergenstock campfire marshmallow raku party people who eventually had to jump ship and try to get in line with what was going on because the revolution had started. They didn't like us and denounced Volkus and said he'd betrayed them. When we had the first legitimate ceramic show at the Art Institute and Alvin Light, who is a wood sculptor who is deceased, and he goes to Manuel Neri, who was in the show, what are you doing hanging out with these people? Are You're an artist. My mother had a ceramic club in the basement, and as time has gone on, that story has sort of morphed into, that's where I learned about ceramics, and to a degree that's true, but it was sort of vicariously. When I first became seriously interested in ceramics, the kinds of things that she was doing technically, slip casting, china paints, low fire, all of those things were strictly relegated to the realm of the hobbyist. And uh, it was only till later, after I tried my hand at, you know, doing macho ceramics like Volkus and John Mason, I thought back to stuff I'd seen that my mother's doing, and I'm thinking, you know, this would be a lot easier if I slip cast it or china paint, you can fire over and over again, and it's more like painting and it's more direct, you know, you're not reliant on the uh, good graces of the kiln god or goddess or spiritual entity of your choice. <laughs> In short, trust your intuition, trust your instincts, judge later, sometimes way later. Give it time to rest. I don't want, you know, I'm, and my goal isn't to become part of uh, the, uh, any kind of canon or any of that stuff. I mean, I'd be happy to be a footnote. I just want to make stuff that I think is as good as the stuff that I like, you know, and maybe somebody else will get it, um, hopefully.